Hey guys, welcome to how to use the node editor in Cycles for Blender. In this video, we're going to go over exactly how to use the node editor to create and manipulate materials in Cycles. It is a node based engine and in order to get the most out of your shaders for Cycles, you have to use the node editor. So let's go ahead and start by dragging this panel down so we get an extra panel here. Create a node editor panel so we can actually edit our node setup. So if you don't have a material output node, go ahead and make sure you have the correct node workspace enabled. It should be the leftmost shader node workspace. And then you can go ahead and fiddle around with the node editor. So as a basic overview for navigation, it's very intuitive. Everything that you do in the node editor is basically the same as what you would do in the viewport. So you can actually hit G to move around nodes. You can also right click to select. You can also left click to select. In order to manipulate the node connections, you'll be using left click. You can use middle mouse to pan. You don't have to hold shift for this one. You can also zoom in and out with your scroll wheel. And of course, you can add nodes using shift A. So I'm going to go ahead and add a shader node here. Let's add a few shaders. It's pretty simple. You have the glossy shader or the, uh, the ambient occlusion shader or something. Let's add an emission shader. And let's say you have all these shaders and you're saying, oh, well, I have all these shaders. Let's go ahead and put them into the material. Well, you can actually only fit one of these into the material output node. So how do we actually combine these and output it into a material node? Well, you have a few extra shaders, the add shader and the mix shader that allow you to combine nodes. So if I go ahead and take the glossy shader, for example, put one here. And now that we have these two shaders combined, I can go ahead and drag this shader into the material output. And you can tell this is the sum value of a diffuse shader plus a glossy shader. You have a very diffusey, shiny kind of material, which is very interesting. You can also use the mix shader. I'm going to go ahead and show you that with the, uh, the shaders down here. Let's go ahead and take that. And I can actually drag it over a connection to kind of wedge myself in between there. And then I can go ahead and take the emission shader, for example, and mix it with a 50% value, which is, this is a percentage. You can go all the way to 100, which biases completely to the emission shader, as you can see here, 100% emission. Or you can go to zero, which is just the original add shader that we had over here, the first input. But around 50% is, you can tell, about 50%. So you can mix shaders as well. And you can do this as many times as you want. So I can go ahead and duplicate with Shift D, connect that, and be an occlusion. Boom. Here's another one. So now we have all four of these shaders included in the material output in some way. There's a lot more things other than that. For example, this factor here can actually not just be a number, but can be something else. For example, you can add a Fresnel and put that as the factor. And that will slightly give it a Fresnel look to it. And if you just change up this index of refraction for the Fresnel node, you can see that this affects the mix shader in different ways. And yeah, that's how you create a material in cycles by mixing shaders and adding shaders and manipulating shaders to create what you want. 